all the colors of the rainbow is a common expression. Yet all these colors are present in everyday sunlight. For white light is a mixture of light waves of many colors. It's the rains in the sky, like the raindrops on this window, which break up the light into its separate colors and reflect it to our eyes as a rainbow. This phenomenon has long captured the imagination of men. But it was not until Isaac Newton held a triangular glass prism in the path of a sunbeam that the true nature of color began to be understood. We can duplicate Newton's experiment by allowing a beam of light to pass through a prism and fall upon a white surface. Here in this spectrum, we literally have the colors of the rainbow. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. All the component colors of white light. As the light waves pass through the prism, they are bent or refracted. The shortest waves, those producing the sensation of violet, are refracted the most. The indigo a little less, blue still less, and so on through the spectrum to the waves of red, which are the longest and are refracted the least. These seven colors and the subtle shades in between make up the total range of light waves visible to the human eye. Actually, however, sunlight contains many shorter invisible waves known as ultraviolet, and at the other end of the spectrum are the longer infrared waves, also invisible. Light waves of different lengths react on our eyes and transmit to our brains the sensation of color. An object appears white when it reflects all wavelengths. An object appears black when it reflects none but absorbs them all. The principle of color reflection can be demonstrated with these red, white, and blue cubes. That is, red, white, and blue under white light. Let's see what they look like under red light. The red and white cubes now appear to be red, since both reflect red light. But the blue cube absorbs it all and so appears to be black. Now let's see what happens under a blue light. The white and blue cubes appear to be the same color because they both reflect the blue light which falls upon them. The red cube absorbs this blue light and so reflects nothing. Photographers often take advantage of this principle by placing a red filter over the camera lens. The red filter absorbs the blue light from the sky and gives the dramatic dark sky effect prized by many photographers. All possible colors may be reproduced by proper combination of the three primary colors. Red, green, and blue. Let's try it with these three spots of light. Red added to green produces yellow. Red added to blue produces magenta. And blue added to green produces blue-green. All three added together produce white. Now when two colors combine to produce white, they are said to be complementary. Blue and yellow are complementary. So are green and magenta. And so are red and blue-green. The complementaries of the three primary colors are sometimes called minus colors. White minus blue is yellow, or minus blue. Magenta is minus green and blue-green is minus red. With our three spotlights, we have seen how colors can be mixed by addition, by adding one wavelength to another. 
Now with gelatin filters of the three minus colors, let's see how colors can be mixed by subtraction. When held against white light, the yellow or minus blue filter absorbs or subtracts the blue waves, allowing the waves producing yellow to come through. The magenta or minus green filter subtracts the green waves. And the blue-green or minus red filter subtracts the red waves. Now let's combine a minus red filter with a minus blue one. Both red and blue waves are subtracted, leaving only the third primary color, green. Similarly, a combination of minus red and minus green subtracts both red and green, leaving blue. A combination of minus green and minus blue subtracts green and blue, leaving the third primary color, red. A combination of the three filters subtracts all three primary colors, leaving black. So we see that in mixture by subtraction, the eventual result of subtracting all primary colors is black. While in mixture by addition, the end result is white. Whenever we use paints or other pigments, we mix by subtraction. By combining various colors which subtract different wavelengths from white light, an artist may produce any desired shade or color. The same principle is applied in color printing. The full color process uses inks of blue-green or minus red, yellow or minus blue, and magenta or minus green. A special plate is prepared for each color, plus a fourth plate, which prints in black to give added depth to the picture. Each plate lays the color onto the paper in a pattern of tiny dots, yellow, magenta, black, and blue-green. By a combination of these colors, any shade or color may be reproduced. With the perfection of modern high-speed presses, full-color illustrations are printed by the millions. Somewhat similar principles are used in the production of color film, such as that on which this motion picture is printed. This type of film, seen here in cross-section, has three layers of emulsion, each sensitive to one of the primary colors of light. After exposure, the film goes through a complex process of development and dye coupling and comes out in brilliant natural colors. These and hundreds of other everyday uses of color have been made possible by man's understanding the nature of color, which began when Isaac Newton first explained the mystery of the rainbow.